Um, we get a lot of questions amongst religious believers uh, in Christianity and uh, actually most religions that actually are out there that believe that they're there for a spiritual purpose and they never realize why are there lawyers involved in everything? Why is it that there are lawyers there? And we always relate to lawyers regarding the law. And we know that the King James Bible spoke of woe unto ye lawyers, for you take away the key of knowledge. Some renderings of that was woe unto ye scribes, so we'll actually at least acknowledge the fact they used the word uh, scribe. And uh, we know that in our society we are always subscribers, so we're always below a scribe, someone who writes the law. That's why you're a subscriber to your social insurance name which means there must be a scribe over and above you because you wouldn't be able to subscribe otherwise. But the concern is, what would be the purpose of the lawyers? Now we know Jesus was an advocate for us. We know that the lawyers even identify themselves even under the worst term you could ever think, which is called the devil's advocate. They don't even hide that. There's even a bar in the Toronto area that's called the Devil's Advocate that has a old British lawyer with a wig, a pitchfork, and a serpent's tail. Sneaky bastards. Boy, they aren't hiding who they are. And we know the fact is that why would you need a lawyer as an advocate when you have Jesus Christ as your advocate? Could it be possibly a lack of faith? that you think you need the lawyer? Well, the lawyer only represents something that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. The fact that they represent themselves as a devil's advocate would tell you what they represent. Could it be possible that the devil actually came up with an idea of a surety that really isn't a surety? Could it be that he offered something possibly to take from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil And possibly the evil now is now involved after we take that offer. Even though the good was there before, but we take something that doesn't belong to us. And something that is not going to help us is evil. And therefore, when we look at the word and we look at the understanding of that, we can understand that if Jesus has come for us as a advocate for us once for all time, he did something that the Levite priests under the Old Covenant could never do, which was lay down perfect blood. He had no sin. He put a sacrifice down that was for all of us. It was a gift, and we would never be able to repay that other than by acceptance and allegiance. We could not work it off, so therefore it was not based on us trying to earn a living. Would it not make sense that those that run evil would operate a society that would run a proselyting of us to be attorneys or Levites? To think that we could earn a living, make a living? I, I only realize that God could make a living. How could we make a living? If you ever try to make a living, please explain to me how that could ever happen. It is an impossibility. You cannot make a living. Only God can make a living. And by accepting Jesus Christ, you now are a living. Because you've accepted the ransom sacrifice. Therefore, you're living in the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's in your Christian name. But the false advocates, the lawyers, don't make any money from that. So they run a whole system that is based on you believing otherwise. Now you won't be wise, you will be otherwise. Because you will lead to ego to believe that you could actually be your own guarantor, your own God, just as Adam and Eve in the garden at one moment thought that they could be their own gods. So are we in anything different than it was? in all the message that was in the Bible. Uh, the Bible's clearly pointed out the whole thing from A to Z, from Genesis from the beginning, 
to the revelation has told us exactly what's going to happen. But if we are not accepting the remedy, which is Jesus Christ, then we are not going to have the remedy from God's word. And God's word is his last will and testament. The first side of the Bible only went so far. And then it required Christ to come to amend the will, which was the New Testament, a new beginning for man. And then he would be born again by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He would no longer be under the penalty of the handwritten ordinances of the man-made law because Christ had wiped that out, canceled it, according to Colossians 3. So we're in a book that's probably at least 65 million copies printed every year. I don't know where they're all going. A book that no one reads, and on average, according to the populace of the world, but still is printed and distributed. But unfortunately, never taken to heart. And God always gives a warning before he brings a disaster. And if you haven't looked around your planet right now and you haven't seen the mess that it's in, if you haven't seen all the whoring and prostituting for money, it'll never stop. People in the logging industry will continue cutting trees down, even though there could be a hundred years of stockpiled trees. But they have to try to make a living, they'll tell you. Well, that's because they're trying to be God. And they won't stop until God stops them. And that's the message of Satan. That he will gather up as many souls that will continue working against God, trying to make a living. We talk to farmers, you know, blessed their ignorance. Because if they're not ignorant, and in God's law they are forgiven. In man's law they're not forgiven. But farmers were the first tax collectors, because that's what farmer means. Tax collector, someone who farms the tax. So he tills more out of the soil than what he needs to live because he's going to sell for profit. So unfortunately, we've got a society that will just continue destroying the planet, using itself, whoring itself for money, which hireling means, in its original meaning, hireling means prostitute, mercenary, even someone who receives a pension, someone who who is a state hireling, who is paid for a treasonous adventure against his own state. Samuel Johnson's Dictionary, 1755. You need to do your research. I could say a lot of things here. If you don't know what they are and you haven't gone to a book to read it, you may be caught up in the electronic wave of, uh, I'll get it off of an uh, electronic site, but I won't go actually to a book. We may not reach you. And then you could believe anything that may come across the net. And eventually you may actually believe this book isn't real. And you actually may believe in Darwin's theory that, uh, that actually man came from monkeys. And I was at a stage one time, you know, where I actually started to believe that there was an intelligent life on this planet. No wonder we were looking for it in other places. And no wonder the banks can sell prime rates to primates because they don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. In later videos, you'll understand what I just talked about there. I won't even give you the benefit of knowing that right now because you may be just kind of uh, shadow boxing after you're watching this video. As long as you're holding property under your, what you believe to be a name that you're signing for, you're blaspheming God. You are not the, the Lord of the land. And you will never be Lord of the land. And God never intended you to be Lord of the land. You were a beneficiary. The meek will inherit the earth. And someone meek and humble would not be in that position of trying to claim something that is not his. To claim to be a beneficiary and to claim to be a landlord are two different things. You cannot be the trustee, the owner, and be the beneficiary. And people lack knowledge of the law from this book, which has told us all about this. 
They've told us that our proper names are our given names, not a surname. A surname is improper. There could be no inheritance other than under a bond. And we will go through later videos to explain the difference between inalienable, inalienable, and alienable, alienable. I use these breakdowns and how I articulate the word so that you understand because you've never been told. And we hope that when you take this to heart, you wipe your slate clean, you realize you don't know. Because if you knew, most likely, and it experienced the knowledge of God, you wouldn't be down the direction you are. God did not talk to those that were wealthy because he knew the odds were they would not get the message because they'd be caught up in their own ego in the illusion of Satan. And the message was for the meek, the poor, the impoverished. And the message was charity and love. And that would not work well for the wealthy. So um, our next videos will break down various other aspects of this and how a Christian today can walk in amongst a world full of nothing but mammon, commercial gain, profit, greed, contract, all the things that have nothing to do with the message that Jesus walked this earth for. We hope that you'll stay tuned.